Tell us about this research that you've been doing this year. I was initially really interested in the possibility that regenerative agriculture could create food that's more nutrient dense and a lot healthier for consumers. And I was really interested in the potential of a scheme that would allow consumers to identify this food and the potential impact that could have on the whole food system by creating motivations for conventional agriculture to try and maximise food quality rather than just agricultural yields and how that could have a flow on effect to change agricultural practices to be more environmentally friendly and sustainable broadly across Australia. What did you do your research project looking at? I did an online survey of Australian regenerative farmers to get an understanding of the range of perspectives out there about the potential for regenerative certification, what everyone thinks regenerative farming is, why farmers choose to farm regeneratively, how they reach their consumers, beliefs about why they think consumers choose their food, and concerns and incentives for joining a certification scheme. What were some of the interesting results that you got? The most interesting result um, across the board for consumers and farmers was a low interest in financial motivations. Farmers think that people who buy regenerative food, um, they're more interested in food quality and the social implications of their purchases, supporting local rural communities, animal welfare concerns, the origin of the food. And similarly, even though all the farmers I surveyed are professional farmers and this is their main income, they are not interested in joining a scheme primarily for the premiums and the financial benefits, but more to learn more about their own farms and to improve food security and encourage the spread of regenerative farming. The majority of farmers do believe that regenerative farming is more profitable than conventional farming. It's just that that profitability isn't the main reason that a farmer would be interested in joining a certification scheme. From your research, what do you think are the next steps and the implications of the research that you've done? Uh, an important next step is, um, is to study consumers and to test whether farmers' perceptions of their consumers are accurate to look at whether a premium is necessary and look into consumers' willingness to pay for regenerative food. I think it's important to recognise the ecosystem services that these farmers are providing. Carbon sequestration, improving water quality, improving biodiversity need to be recognised and the scheme is a potential way to do that. A premium is an important part of the scheme and we need to see how extensive that could be to still maintain a market. One result that does make a lot of sense is the really high diversity of understandings of regenerative. They range from some definitions being extremely prescriptive, including a minimum acceptable ground cover level. Some definitions were really broad, focusing on principles such as a farm that can sustain itself with only the sun and rain. One of the biggest concerns about potential schemes is that diversity of understandings and how we can build all of that diversity into a scheme that encompasses all of those different understandings. Isabella, with your research, do you want to tell us whereabouts you've been doing your research and what program that you've been involved in? I've been doing this as part of the Master of Environmental Science program at the Australian National University at the Fenner School of Environment and Society. My supervisor was Dr Robert Dybal, who researches into food systems mostly, systems theory and feedback guided analysis. I'm leaving Australia and the very current smoky climate, um, moving back to the rain and the cold in New Zealand. I'm hopefully going to bring this understanding of regenerative agriculture to farming there and contribute to the growth of regenerative agriculture in New Zealand.